five and N six. And if you got through, uh, honestly, if you got through N one, this will be pretty simple. Especially if you got through N two and N three, it shouldn't take too long. Do today, anyways. Uh, it's simplification of expressions. And when you start off, you know they start with like the algebra one level material with exponents. That is a nine t to the one half power. Bren, one half power. What root is that? That's a square root. It's really the square root of nine t. You better know what square root of nine is. Three, yeah. Can you take the square root of just t? Now, IXL is not going to want to see radicals on this section. Okay? I was just showing you that so you'd remember that's a square root. That's all it is. So you'd say 3t to the 1 half. Now, what you're actually using here is you're using a property. You have two terms, some a, b, or even c. It doesn't matter. You got some stuff in parentheses with an exponent. Oops, let me rewrite that better. a, b, raised to the x. You just give that exponent to each piece. So it's a to the x, b to the x. That's the property you're using here. It's called the power property because it distributes the power. And most people will do fine with this. Shouldn't be a problem. So you move on down. You do a couple of the easy ones, and they decide they'll make it a little bit harder. Suddenly, the rational exponent's a fraction. Let's not even worry about that right now. The deal is give each piece the power, okay? So that's 64 to the two-thirds. We'll worry about what that is in a second. And we have this c squared to the two-thirds. So think about what we were doing yesterday, or the day before, actually. Some x with an exponent raised again. What do you do with the exponents? Multiply them. That's right. So we need to figure out what 2 times 2 thirds is. How many thirds would you have? You wouldn't have 6 thirds. You have 4 thirds. Ah, it's your day to be wrong, Daniel. It's your day. Now, will we be able to do anything with C? Because we don't have any, we have no idea where it is, right? You can't do anything with it, but you can play with this 64. I know you can. Lindsay, what root is it asking you to take? The cubed root. Okay. And Emma, after we take the cubed root, what are we supposed to do with it? Square it. That's right. For those of you who aren't sure what's going on, this is the cubed root of 64. And then we square it. Because I know I talked about that property as well. Some x to the a over b is the bth root of x, all raised to the eighth power. Now, if you've done any of your IXL, you already know what the q root of 64 is. What is it? It's four. I mean, they, they just love that number. They really do. They love that number, two, and three. That's what they like. So you got a four and you square it, what do you get? Sixteen. We'll just bring that piece on right there on down. See the four thirds. Now, do we need to see another one of those done? It's up to you. I'll do whatever you want. I literally have nothing better to do. Yay, nay, don't care. I got a no. I'm good with that one no. Let's move on down to. I don't know why, but that's an upper-level question. It seems to me that one's easier than any of the other ones. So I'm just skipping that one. We'll skip that one, too. Let's move on to something a little bit different, where the exponent is negative. So I started seeing negative exponents, and I'll do the, the first thing that I'll do is I'll distribute that negative exponent. But there's another rule I'm going to have to memorize. Is 8 to the negative 2 thirds. Uh, 5 times negative 2 is r to the negative 10 fifths, or sorry, 10 thirds. 
the fact that those negative those exponents are negative means I need to do something with those pieces. What do I need to do with them? I need to know this rule. X to the negative A is rewritten how? 1 over X to the positive A. So those pieces need to be shifted down to the denominator. You know, some of you guys will do a lot of work in your head, but I'm just going to show the shift down to the denominator. So 1 over 8 to the 2 thirds power, r to the 10 thirds power. Now, has that been up the whole time? Why didn't you tell me? I ain't been paying attention to that. Can we do anything with r to the 10 thirds? No, it's the 8 to the 2 thirds that we got to worry about. JC, what root is it asking us to take of 8? Hmm? The cube, root. the cube root. What is the cube root of 8? Eight? 2. two. Alright, so that's been done. Jaden, after you figure out the cube root of 8 is 2, what are you supposed to do with it? Square it, and what do you get? Four. One over four r ten. Sorry, r raised to the ten thirds power. There is kind of a shortcut to this. I'll let you guys figure out that pattern on your own. If you do enough of these, you'll see there's kind of a pattern the way it, with, with the numbers that I Excel tends to use, anyways. Now this one I put on there just because when you look at it, you might think. There's only one thing you have to do. You might be tempted to just say that this is 1 over negative r to the negative 2 thirds power. Sorry, to the positive 2 thirds power. Let me do it this way. Negative 1 over r to the 2 thirds power. IXL would reject that in a heartbeat. That's definitely wrong. Why is that wrong? What is another way of rewriting negative r? What is it really? What is it implied to be? Negative 1 times r. Negative r is a negative 1 times r. So this is what we really had. You know, if you just kind of glanced at it and just wrote that wrong answer, it's wrong for a reason. Why is it wrong? Did you give the negative symbol the exponent? The kidder did it wrong. Did they give the negative one the exponent? So this is negative one to the negative two thirds power, r to the negative two thirds power. We even have to distribute the exponents to your negativity symbols because they actually represent a negative one. You need to understand that. That's understood. It's easy to make a mistake. It's understood. All right, so what do we got? We got 1 over negative 1 to the 2 thirds power, r to the 2 thirds power. And it's not one of them cubic roots. Haley, what's the, uh, sorry, Brooks, Haley Brooks, what's the cubic root of negative 1? It's not 1. Cubic, it's negative 1. Because a negative 1 times a negative 1 times a negative 1 is negative 1. Now, after we find that cubic root, Bryce, what are we supposed to do with it? What do we get? One. Whoops, I'm up here on a that one there is understood, which means you do not put it in the box. If you take the cubic root of a negative and you square it, it's going to become positive. Just the way it works. So be careful on a question like that. It's easy to make a mistake. Now, if you could do that one, you could do the one to the diagonally to the left. As you get up in there, I think this is around the 70s or 80s, they start throwing two things at you. And they're I, I don't understand why they consider that a harder question. You got TU to the 11 sixth. What are you going to do with the 11 sixth power? Distribute it. Distribute it. It's 
T to the 11, 6, U to the 11, 6. It's easier than the first ones, isn't it? So I don't understand why they consider that a high-level question. That one is worth doing. Maybe. I don't know. Probably not. That's a ST to the fourth all raised to two-thirds. S to the two-thirds. T to what power? Eight-thirds. Yeah. It wasn't what I thought it was. Is there anything you can actually do with it? Nah. Now, I think when you get into the upper 80s, they start throwing this stuff at you. This is kind of like a combination of the multiplication and division section. It's really all it is. Our exponents here, the denominators, appear to be an 8, a 6, and a 4. So I'm going to rewrite this for you for what I think it is. I think this is x to the 13 eighths times x to the 17 sixths sitting over x to the uh, 5 fourths. And if that's not what it is, big deal. That's the problem we'll do. And kids, you can do this pretty much any way you want. It doesn't really matter. You can do it piece by piece. You could actually do it all at once. It doesn't really matter to me. When you multiply two like terms together, what are you supposed to do with the exponential space? Add it. When you divide like terms, what are you supposed to do with the exponential space? Subtract. Now, what I would actually do is I would just follow that rule 100%. I'd start in the denominator. I'd say this is x to the 13 eighths plus 17 sixths minus, minus what? Five quarters. You know, really, it's all about just figuring out what that piece right there is. It's all it's about. You see multiplication, you add. You see subtraction, you, or sorry, you see division, you subtract. And you're going to have to do a little work on this one if you're doing it by hand. I wish you would, but you're not going to. You're going to punch buttons on a calculator. You're going to get a diploma and not know how to add or subtract fractions. It's really kind of sad. Then you're going to vote Democrat. I probably shouldn't have recorded that. Sorry, Emily. Anyways. Eight, six, and four. What do you want to turn them all into? I don't think we do 12. I think we can do 24. Kelly, does 8 go, does eight go in 12? Oh, no. Oh. I think we do 24. <laughs> now, I'm not going to show that, but we're going to 3 these pieces. That's 39 24. We're going to 4 these pieces. That's 68 24. And I guess we're going to 6 this guy. Minus 30 24. <laughs> You don't have to do addition, subtraction, and set order, by the way. 39 minus 30 is 9. 68 plus 9 being 75. X is 75, 24. So it's not that hard of a problem. Uh, you know, what's going to get you all is, is when you try to do this, the, the simple fifth grade math stuff, but man, that's what's going to get you. Heck, I'm not perfect. That stuff messes me up, too, sometimes. So, if you can do that one, I think you could do the one underneath it. Well, actually, let's talk about the one underneath. That problem is way easier than you might think it is. Think about PEMDAS. Is there something you can do in the parentheses? They're both S's. There's an S up top, there's an S down low. Ah, it's an S. Can they cancel? Yeah. 
This is one sixteenth to the three quarters. Uh, this is an extension of the power rule, actually. It just deals with fractions. If you have some a divided by some b raised to the x, you just give both pieces the x. That's all you do. So we're going to give that 1 a 3 quarters power. We're going to give that 16 a 3 quarters power. And 1 to the 3 quarters power is not something that you spend 5 minutes in deep thought about. What is 1 to the 3 quarters power? 1. 1 to a smiley face is 1. 1 to the 0 is still what? 1. 1 to any negative number? 1. Okay? It's 1, kids. There's no way to turn a 1 into anything other than itself unless you're multiplying, adding, or subtracting. Can't do it with exponents. 16 to the 3 quarters. Annika, what root are we supposed to be taking? The what root? No, not the cube. Top's power, bottom's root. Gosh. Let's see here. I already wrote it once today. But some x to the a over b is the bth root of x all to the a. So whatever number is in the bottom of the fraction, that's the root you want to take. All right? So we're looking at 16 and 3 quarters. What root do I want? I want the fourth root. That's what number times itself, 4 times, generates a 16. Asia, what is the fourth root of 16? 2. Now, after we find that fourth root, what are we supposed to do with it? Cube it. 2 times 2 times 2, kids. 8. And if you can do that one, you could do the one underneath it. All right. That actually covers uh, at least two of them. I can't remember which two. This covers the last one. And it's basically the same thing. Like This is how this lesson starts off with. U over U to the negative three quarters power. What's U over U? One. Like there's, there's really no point really messing with this thing. It's one. Now, if you, if you got to, you can manipulate the living crap out of this thing all you want. You know, if you hadn't paid much attention to me today, you might say, oh, that's one over one to three quarters. Then you're going to spend a couple of seconds asking yourself what the fourth root of one is, which is still what. Then you're going to cube it. What are you going to get? I swear that one to a smiley face is still one. All right, it's one. So don't let a question like that bug you too much. One of the, I have actually kind of a disappointment in this section in that it doesn't really give you enough hard stuff to do. Like I don't think this kind of question shows up until the late, later early 80 point range. And the honest truth is you need to be doing stuff like this. And that doesn't show up until you enter the challenge zone. But whatever, it is what it is. I wish you would take out to at least till you start seeing stuff like this. Because that's really where you at least need to be. But some kids need to play catch up. Hopefully you, you at least all see things like this. Uh, that exponent is a negative five thirds. And uh, every time I ever taught this in Algebra 2, I would tell kids to do what they can do in the parentheses first before they move on to the exponents. Because there is work you can do in the parentheses. You got an 8 over 27. That doesn't necessarily reduce. But I see a y to the fourth over a y. What's that reduced to? Y to the third. So I got my 8. I got my 27. I got a y cubed up top. I got a z sitting over z to the fourth. 
What's that reduced to? Be the third. That's down low because we took away one from four. Raise the two thirds power. Now, the two thirds power says take what root? The third. And then once you found the third root, square it. I don't want to show every step on this problem. Cube root eight, square it, four. Cube root of, actually you could probably just get away with straight multiplication here, but cube root of y cubed is y, isn't it? What is wrong with me? <laughs> All right, yeah, there's obviously a negative symbol there. Yeah, right. It's cool. Let's do this again. Okay, so this is actually going to get a little bit harder, isn't it? Let's raise the negative five quarters. Negative five thirds. Still can't figure it out. Well, I guess what we should do in this case is probably not do so much in our heads, but distribute that thing to every piece, top and bottom. And I will skip a step. I don't know if I should, but I will skip a step. This would become eight to the negative five thirds. Where would it belong? Denominator as a positive five thirds. This will become y to the negative fifteen thirds, which is the negative fifth power. Where would it belong? Right here. That's the denominator. It's actually y to the fifth. Three times negative five is negative fifteen divided by three. So that's a y to the fifth. Now, this piece right here is already in the denominator. When you distribute that negative exponent to it, where does it actually belong? Numerator. We'll, we'll fit, this piece can be figured out too, but we'll worry about that in a second. And this piece right here would become z to the negative fifth, but it's already in the denominator, so you get it moved to the numerator. z cubed. Now we can't do anything with z's and y's, but we can do stuff with the numbers. It's the cubic root. What's the cubic root of 27? 3. Now you do 3 times 3 times 3 times 3 times 3. It's not 81. Where is it? No, it's not 81. Got one more 3 in. 3 to the 4th is 81. 243. Which you'd know if you would have done that first one by hand. I swear you would have. And we all know the cube root of 8 by now. It's 2. 32. Sorry I messed that exponent up on that one. So there's that one, and one more, and I'll be done, and you guys will have a little bit of practice time. I'm just going to do the one underneath here. I really wish you would get this far. You may not. You may take your 90 and be done with it. But the truth is, you need to be able to do a problem like this, at the very least. Now, this one is a challenge question for a reason. It's not necessarily, I think the reason this is a challenge question is probably that little guy right there. That little negative symbol. really what I think. Remember that that little piece right there is a negative 1 times v to the 7 sixth. And even the negative 1 has to have that negative exponent given to it. So that's what I'll do. And I'll just kind of show the initial setup when I multiply the exponent. You know, it goes there. I have a negative 1 to the negative 7th. When you multiply 7 sixths and negative 7 together, what do you get? Negative 49 sixth, which 
doesn't reduce. When you multiply the negative half and 7 together, what do you get? You get positive 7 halves. So that'll actually get to stay up high. Don't forget you also have to hit that 2. Everything has to be given the exponent. Everything. You got v to the negative second times the negative 7, v to the 14th. It's positive, which is nice. And then negative 7 times 3 is w to the negative 21st power. Really, all you got to do is start moving things around. You were supposed to write these so that the exponents are positive. So if you've got a negative exponent up top, move it to the bottom, and vice versa. Now, this uh, negative 1 to the negative 7th power is actually a negative 1 to the positive 7th power. We'll worry about what that is in a second. This 2 to the negative 7th power gets moved up top to the positive 7th. There was a v to the 14th already down low. Moving right next to it is a v to the positive 49 sixth. There was a w to the 7 halves up top, and moving next to it is a w to the 21st power. So just make sure you move things around right. And then, of course, you got to start doing a little calculation here. Like 2 to the 7th is getting on up there. The seventh ought to be 128. Ought to be. How about seven halves plus 21? Because those are multiplied together and we add exponents. Seven halves plus 21. Forty-nine. That's right. When I was your age, I still kind of used a lot of decimals, and I would be like, oh, that's 3.5 plus 21, that's 24 and a half. And then I'd double it, because I knew I was dividing by 2, and I get my 49. That's what I kind of did when I was your age. Some of you may, some of you may not. That's W to the 49 halves. Now, what do you get if you take a negative 1, and you multiply it by itself 7 times? Still get a negative one. Then you got v to the fourteenth times v to the forty-nine sixth. You got to add those together. You got to add fourteen and forty-nine sixth together. What's 6 times 14? 84. Add 84 and 49. 133? That's what I came up with in my head. Well, that's simplify. No. No. I Excel might reject this answer. Do I know why it might reject it? Yeah, there's really no reason to say that there's negative one. And also, are you really supposed to leave negatives in the denominator? No. Well, I always just move them up top, and I don't think I Excel has a problem with that. I don't think it requires it be in front of the fraction. But I would just move the negative symbol up top and not even worry about the one being written or shown. And that was a lot of fun. I, I didn't see that question show up until I hit like 97 on this section. Some of you guys want to do stuff like that, and some of you don't. And some of you will just take your cookie at 90 and call it a day. It is what it is. That covers all of the end stuff. That was under Algebra 2.